So I'm going to quickly talk to you about my uh, little cool model that I made. My um, Tony Hart moment. Who? Yeah, I know. I'm showing my age, but I, I used to live in the UK and I used to love watching that guy um, doing his artistic thing. So I spent an hour or so yesterday and I made this contraption. I know. It's cool, isn't it? You're impressed, aren't you? Is that cool or what? So, in case you wondered, this is my truck. Well, it's just my truck it's chassis. Four wheels, and I've made a ladder rail chassis, which is what most of these trucks are made out of. So it's two rails like that. It almost is identical to my trucks. It has the four cross members, including the bumper at the front. And all I did was stick it together with my handy glue gun. And I had a set of wheels from some, I don't know where I got them from, some old car. Um, I stole off a young kid. No, that's a joke, by the way. Um, and yeah, so I made this. I even triangulated it. You know how I, how I like triangulating everything? And it's made it actually quite sturdy. There's a bit of flex in it, but pretty solid. I mean, look how thick it is here. Double cardboard. Double cardboard. Not just cheap stuff. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend this thing is going to go over some big man's off-roading. And, dun dun dun, for the man's, I made two of these. Two cardboard ramps. Hello everyone, I'm back. Um, last week you watched a video of me building the extension on my truck, so now it's actually the size I want it to be, which is five meters overall, and it's still obviously 2.4 meters, actually 2.44 meters wide. So I'm at the stage now where I'm thinking about how this bed is going to be mounted onto the truck. And I'm going to explain a little bit about how um, the twisting of the chassis affects the bed on my truck and therefore the bed will eventually affect how the box itself performs on the back of the bed and one of the number one issues is twisting of the chassis or chassis flex. I have done, uh, I will do a little bit of an explanation on that on my trusty little whiteboard here and you'll see that clip uh, after this introduction. Um, but what I wanted to talk about is how it's going to be laid out. I've got my lovely board pens here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it on this board here uh, just to give you a bit of um, background of how this is all coming together. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a very quick sketch of my truck. I can hopefully you'll be able to see this from the camera. So track wheel, front wheel, usual stuff, cab, bumper and obviously mine is a dual cab so it comes sort of to there. Anyway, so that's roughly it. And then the chassis rails go pretty much across there and come out there. Obviously this is not to scale, but that is basically the chassis of the truck. With my particular setup, I've got a bit of wood, some hardwood that's going to go in between along here. It's already came with the truck and it acts as a buffer to, I guess, take some shock out of the road being transferred into the bed itself. So that is approximately 65 millimeters thick or high. And the next layer will be, and I can adjust that because it's wood, I could probably rip it down, cut it a little bit and um, that way 
I have some play in the heights. The next layer is obviously the truck bed, which I'm going to put in this funny pink color. And the truck bed is actually 75 millimeters thick. Mine has a backing board, so if I put a backing board somewhere there like that, and that sits on top like so, slightly thicker than the wood, but not by much. So that is my truck bed. So that is the actual bed itself. And then on top of that, there's going to be a, I've run out of colors, but there's going to be a subframe. The subframe, I haven't decided how thick that's going to be. So the subframe sits on top of that. And that's the subframe for the actual bed. Now, what will happen with this is because this is extended, this is the chassis, that's where all the bits and pieces end. My actual bed is now a little bit longer, as you know, because I've extended it. It was always a little bit longer anyway. Um, and then I've extended a little bit more. So that's the bed. And the subframe is going to match, which is the black here again. So it sits on top of there like that. So that subframe is actually going to be glued and attached to the box. And finally, the box will sit on top. It's actually glued to that subframe. And my box is going to have a small overhang. And it's going to be actually slightly different to that. I'm having a little drop here so I can have somewhere to put my solar panels and it's going to look a bit like that. Try and keep chassis, wood, chassis, wood. I don't know if you can see this on the camera, it's probably out of sight. Bed. Subframe. Box. So there are the various la layers. The chassis is 250 millimeters deep. The wood's about 65. The bed is 75. Subframe is unknown, but likely to be around 70. And the box is wherever the box is. So you can see there's a number of layers involved. And this is the bit that we want to keep rigid here. But these two are going to flex. This one's going to flex against the chassis. And that's where the next series of three videos comes in. This is where I'm going to um, talk about how I'm going to make the actual brackets and they're going to have some sort of suspension system that will stop, won't stop the chassis from twisting but it will stop the bed from twisting with the chassis so the bed stays as rigid as possible to make sure that the subframe stays as rigid as possible which therefore in turn makes the bed stay as rigid as possible as well um, and that's basically the next um, major project that's involved in this and you'll see a number of videos as I go I've only um, just start putting them together of how I uh, achieved that and how I perceived through doing lots of research of how to do that um, if anyone's got any comments or pointers about whether I'm doing this the right way or there's a better way or it's good um, please leave some comments and let me know anyone who's been through this So I'm back again with by popular demand because everyone's raving on about my whiteboard. Well, my picnic table turned whiteboard. In this um, little bit segment, I'm just going to talk about how I've decided to um, support the box and keep the chassis flexing isolated from the box so the box stays rigid. And in my last drawing, you saw my, how I, my box is going to sit on the truck, the different layers from the chassis, the bit of wood for the buffer. The actual bed and then the subframe so i'm going to do a similar drawing but this time it's going to be a cross-sectional drawing so if you imagine that's the chassis there that's the chassis rail of the truck you're looking at it from the front or the back you've got the little bit of wood that sits on top like so again let's do this in different colors 
and you then have the actual um, bed itself of the truck here which is a little bit taller and then you'll have the subframe which is part of the box itself box subframe and I know it's difficult to see but let's just so that's the chassis there and what I'm going to do is let's do it the other way around so let's make the box that way so this is the inside of the truck and this is the outside so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to attach this part to this part solidly enough but still allow flexibility so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some sort of we'll do it in red some sort of L bracket that will come down like this and that will be welded to the bed and then another bracket that straddles this part but I might raise it a little bit to about that level comes down to here and this is going to be bolted through the actual chassis itself to the other side and in this area here there's going to be normally it's a spring a coiled spring like so but I'm using something I found that's built, uh, used in Canada a lot for trailer parts and trailer suspension which is a big rubber bung that looks like this I guess and has a little indent like that and, and I think they're called tambourine and what happens is a big washer and a nut that sits here that bolts all the way through goes all the way through here and then there's another nylock nut to stop it coming out that sits there and what that does is as this chassis flexes or the bed wants to move up it'll squash this tambourine down like so so it ends up like more like a donut like so and as that squashes down of course it's not squashing on my drawing let's try and squash it to the professional spray wipe so what happens is the tambourine will squish down and it's now that it's not dry, I can't draw on it. It'll squish down, so that's the top part of it, and it'll actually turn into this like big rugby ball, I guess, shape, but it's reduced in size. And that reduction is what lets the chassis flex from the bed itself. So when the chassis is twisting up and down, that can flex with it. And I've actually ordered these, and they were actually in stock which is amazing and you can get them in different um, uh, pressure gradients so how much it will carry so here's the one that I've ordered I've ordered four of these and I don't know if you can see it but that's the manufacturer's name which is Timbrin or Tambrin I don't know if you can see that and basically this massive washer goes into a hole there like so I've actually uh, altered these but I'll show you that in the video and the whole thing sits like these and these I can't squash it by hand because it's so hard but this will squash right down to I think it's 35 millimeters so it takes a lot of it can take a lot of pounding now like I said they're rated and I went for the sort of a, th a thousand kilo per I think it's the thousand to twelve hundred kilos per bung I'm only using four of them Two at the front near the cab, two about a third, two thirds of the way down, and then the back end is going to be semi securely fixed to the chassis, which is what is recommended um, on how to do these rail on rail systems, which I'll explain to you later on. Um, there are three options that you can go for one is called a three and four point multi link um, subframe, um, another one is called rail on rail. And the third one is a hybrid of the first two. Um, the rail on rail one is the easiest for the layman to make at home or in a workshop at home. 
whereas the 3 and 4.1 is quite um, quite technical and you really need someone who can cut the components, uh, plasma cut them um, and then you weld them together and I think in this country you're going to have to get them engineered for your particular truck for it to pass. I don't want to go down that route, it's too complex, it's unnecessary. I'm not going to go rock crawling in these in this truck, I'm just going to go off-road, general off-road stuff, uh, nothing severe. So I've opted to go for this much simpler system called a rail on rail system and most of the fire trucks in this country of that era, sort of 89 to nine, late 90s, use this system. So I didn't just choose this um, willy-nilly, um, I chose it based on research. My only problem is none, no one could tell me um, because they've been around for some time what, and they all look very similar, what rating they were on the particular fire trucks. I remember these fire trucks were carrying five ton water tankers plus all the other equipment like the pumps and whatever ancillaries, hose pipes, the usual stuff that a fire truck carries. So I've gone for the one ton to 1200 kilo each rating. It might be too much, it might not be enough, I don't know yet. The beauty is they had the whole catalogue of different ratings so I could technically maybe swap to uh, and get a softer rating or if I have to go for a harder rating and to be honest I'm not really going to know that until a lot of the stuff that's going to go on the bed is built including the box then I can guesstimate what the weight is. At the moment I'm guesstimating the box to go between two and three ton with everything in it, fridge, water, sinks, beds, cupboards, the whole lot. I don't know that might be underestimating it may be overestimating I don't think so so based on that calculation I thought well two ton divided by four is going to be 500 kilos per one of these that's without the solid fixings at the back which obviously will hold a lot more um, yeah if anyone knows if there's a formula for this or is there another way of calculating this please let me know in the comments um, again um, I'm just basing it on research, as much research that I've done on the subject that I could. I hope this diagram makes sense um, a little bit. So there's going to be four of these, two on each side, and then the fixing point at the back, which is where the fixing point is recommended to be, because that's the least amount of flex. The most amount of flex happens just before the cab, apparently. Not sure why, but that's what it says. All right, I hope that was interesting. Um, yeah, look these up. They're pretty cool. Um, I might even use these for the truck's actual suspension because it's so harsh. I might go with these or remove my bump stops and use these because um, it'll make the, the actual journey much more comfortable. Anyway, Omar out. As I mentioned before, the um, system I'm going to go for is the rail on rail system, which is the one I've beautifully done on my board right here. That's why I've got an asterisk there. Now, I've done this on a board because I thought it might be useful for somebody. I've just spent a few minutes writing it up and I didn't want to actually reference to the, you know, the information that I've got directly because I'm not sure if that infringes on copyright stuff. I'm sure it will, so I'm not going to do that. But I will recommend the book, which is this book here. I'm sure I'm not going to infringe on any copyright stuff, but um, because I'll put a description and where you can get it uh, in the, sorry, I'll put information about where you can get it in the description wow that was quite weird anyway so this is the book i don't know if i there we go um overlanding overland build your own overland camper by steve wigglesworth and it's a haynes manual so anybody who's ever fiddled with cars or what have you um when they were younger and had to rely on a manual. Um, Haynes are pretty much, um, have got that covered. I think they're one of the best manuals around um, and they're so easy to follow, great pictures. Especially in the days when I was younger, there was no internet, there was no way you could find out information. You had to actually read books, people. You know those things that you open up, not the ones that, yeah, you know what I mean. Anyway, back to this. So. And if you can see this, perhaps you can. Three or four point pivoting system. I'm just gonna run through it and then I'm gonna do another drawing and then I'm gonna do my cheeky little demonstration, which I'm so thrilled actually works, you know? Some things you do, you think, is this worth it? Is it going to work? 
and even I was flabbergasted by it. Anyway, three or four point fitting system, pros, huge flex, excellent four wheel drive capability, and it keeps all the four wheels on the ground. So those of you who are into four wheel driving know how important that is. You've got to keep your wheels on the ground to get maximum traction. Um, it also creates less vibration coming through the chassis because you've got um, less direct connection, I guess, with the box. So that's good for the box and for the contents of your box, especially your very expensive Spode or Dalton China tea sets, which I'm sure you all have, don't you? Anyway, um, isolates torsional forces as well. So it's really good at isolating that. It's probably the king of isolating torsional forces. Um, and this is why it's used on military trucks like the MOG and a lot of other um, army vehicles that are uh, and very good off-road campers. Whereas the rail-on-rail -rail system hasn't got that many, it has got some pros and they're pretty good. Um, one of them is obviously for the handyman at home or the fabricator, pretend fabricator at home. Um, it's easy to make and that's where I come in and that's why I'm doing it. It has good flex and it keeps all wheels on the ground. I've put question markers, it's obviously not as good as this system and the reason is is because it's limited. I mean the flex is limited but at the end of the day like I said in my earlier um, bit of explanation I am not going rock climbing in this thing. I um, may go on the odd off-road thing that may stretch it a little bit but I'm not going to take it onto crazy tracks where I'm going to get into trouble especially when you're on your own. Um, the other thing I've written here, it isolates torsional forces, which it does very well. Um, and like I said, again, up to a limit. Cons. So let's go back to the three and four point pivoting system. The cons, well, as I mentioned before, it's complicated to make. Um, you really have to get some engineer drawings to do it. Um, it's higher overall. Um, I've put here higher overall height because the actual mechanism inside this whole three point pivot system is actually quite chunky so you're looking at probably a 300 mil in size maybe more um, that you lose from the height and that's why Unimogs are so tall they lose a lot of their habitation box height or limited by it because they're already so far off the ground that's partly to do with their portal axles as well but it's also to do with this three point pivoting system whereas the other truck none of that happens um, it does here, I've referenced the book and it says it can cause load point stress rises and I guess that's because it literally is, if it's a 3.1, you literally have three points of contact between the chassis and, and the actual box, which isn't very much and when you think that all that load is just going through three points, whereas a rail on rail system as it implies, the whole rail is taking the weight. It's only now and then that it comes off those rails when it's going and flexing on off-road terrain. So that, unless it's done properly, it could cause issues. Um, the other one that is a bit of a, I'm sure you've seen some of these off-road, you know, behemoths that are constructed by those companies in Europe. Um, the whole box can actually flop around quite, quite violently at sometimes, depending on how extreme the off-road conditions are, but also that, you know, um, that's causing a lot of shaking. Imagine your fridge doing that, you know, with all your, you know, really precious food in there, eggs and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Um, or the blancmange that you just prepared for tea that's turned into mush. But anyway, um, and then what have I written here? So at the bottom I've written here, it's suited to flexible chassis trucks. So there's a lot of trucks out there that have very flexible chassis. A lot of the German trucks have those issues. So the MOG is not, you know, it's one of them, the MANS, the Mercedes, all these have quite flexible chassis and they're designed to be like that for a reason, but um, this system is more suited for that type of truck. So going to the cons for the rail on rail, can pass high level of road vibration to the box, that's true, but I'm going to mitigate that by putting um, some sort of flexible rubber, almost like um, maybe I'm going to use some, um, I don't know what they call it, where they cart coal along the, the way in the mines, what do they call them? Conveyor belt rubber. Something like that. Something hard and durable, but actually softer than steel on steel. At the moment, my truck actually has two 
lengths of hardwood and apparently that's not a bad option either to keep the vibration to a minimum so I might augment it with some um, rubber to make it a little bit less um, vibrate and oh, transmit a little less vibration from the road um, that's about it really for its cons um, it doesn't have many cons for the rail on rail system and hence why simpletons like me go for this and why a lot of other people do it as well the last thing I've put here as a note same to this one it's actually suited probably and it's definitely suited for my truck for trucks with a semi rigid or rigid chassis in other words the chassis is designed not to flex too much um, so it keeps its integrity of course the downside of that is eventually um, it'll cock one of the wheels up rather than actually flex and um, which isn't a bad thing but you don't want to do that too often because you want to don't want to transfer that stress into your habitation box but that's about it so um, it's pretty cool um, I'm quite happy about that and this is why I've decided to go for that so I'm going for the rail on rail system so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this up so that you can see that I am going to make a scenario where this truck is going to go up some I'm going to see if we can get the classic four-wheel drive double whammy so it goes on both. I might stagger this one. So I'm going to glue this one down right here. So I'm going to hold him down and then set. Wow, this stuff is good. It's already set. So here we go. And then to glue the other one right here. Let's double check. What do you think of that? So they're already in there. So, as part of this experiment, let's move you out of the way, we are going to pretend we're going to do this properly, you know, none of this messing around stuff. Two socket sets. These are the big ones. So these are quite heavy. 27 mil deep socket, 24 mil deep socket. I've got this little, this is my uh, little experiment. Um, I think this was spool gun aluminium welding experiment. Anyway, this is going to be my truck load. So he's gonna go right on there like so. I'm going to put them on there like so. I'm going to add this socket and this one. I might put one in between to stop it from wobbling around. Well, let's just try it like that, shall we? So here we go. I'm just going to pull in from behind the camera. And can you see? I hope my cardboard model doesn't break, but he's struggling because he needs a lot of power. See, it's cocking a wheel up at the back. So look how much that chassis has flexed. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Look at the back compared to the front. You might think these two are too big. For it. So that's a real, real case scenario. So here we go. Look at the flex in the chassis there. Can you see that? So it's flat here. And the back is twisted. And as it comes forward, 
and see how it all levels out. Let's try that again, that's fun. So here we go. Video is lifting. Let's do a bit sideways. Look at the back twisting. It's cocking the leg up because it's gone as far as the chassis can flex, which is probably what's going to happen to mine. But these are extreme conditions. I mean, at the end of the day, that mound is just just about halfway or just over halfway the height of that wheel. If that was a real case scenario of my actual truck, that would mean it would be 500, half a meter of a rut or a hump either way. And when you combine the two, that's effectively forcing the chassis to twist um, at least, well, I, I suppose a meter. So here we go again. I just thought this was cool. Let's bring this a bit further forward so you can see the back better. Look how much that rear end compared to this. I'm just holding it with my finger. These two are flat. Those two are flat. And look at the angle. I hope it shows on this camera because I thought this was really cool on this today. And there she goes again. And now let's try the other side. And again, too much for it. So the back look, but look at the twist on that chassis. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I don't know, simple minds and all that, but I enjoyed doing that. I enjoyed making it. And it is really an amazing illustration of chassis flex. And I think, and now I know why I'm doing all the work I'm doing. Anyway, what follows on is how I actually started doing all this. Um, the different uh, bits and pieces that I scabbed from, um, you know, my scrapyard man, um, as I hate wasting um, new material when you can get it in abundance, um, secondhand and unwanted. Anyway, enjoy the rest of this video. Like I said, if you like this sort of stuff, please share it with someone else who's into this sort of crazy fabricating stuff for trucks and um, Give me a like, a comment, and please subscribe. It'll make a big difference. It'll make me do more stuff like this. Omar. Oh,